Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Environment, Fisheries and Forestry Minister Barbara Creasy has indicated that a Presidential Commission on Climate Change will be established. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss the development. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. When was the idea for this commission first mooted and why? Well, it was mooted in, as part of the job summit process that happened in 2018 and the, the effort there was for business, government, labour and community to come up with initiatives with, that would both save jobs and create jobs. And there was obviously uh, the threat to coal miners from the transition to a low carbon economy is one of the issues that uh, in the public domain or in the, in the environment. And uh, there was a view that we should set up a uh, presidential-led commission to try and navigate this uh, transition to a low carbon economy in a way that's uh, least harmful to those that are whose livelihoods are tied to industries such as coal. So that was really, that's really the genesis behind it. And it's been some time now since the job summit and it hasn't been actualized. But last week, Minister Creasy indicated that her and the president had agreed that yes, this uh, structure should be formed and that it would play a key role in uh, navigating the so-called just transition. What could a just transition to a low carbon economy entail? I think the, obviously the big focus is on the coal industry. We know that uh, Eskim is going to be um, decommissioning coal-fired power stations over the next two decades. Um, it starts slowly but then it gets quite precipitous in its decline towards 2030 and beyond. And so we know, we have visibility of that coming. We also know that the, the cheapest new build options for South Africa are no longer coal and that uh, even though the integrated resource plan which could be released next week is likely to include some new coal, the amount of coal that's going to come out from the decommissioning of the plant will have to be replaced primarily by uh, uh, wind, onshore wind and solar photovoltaic plants backed up by some sort of flexibility options. The, the option at the moment that's uh, top of mind is gas because it's the, seen as the, the bridge or the fuel to the future, although that's even in dispute at the moment. But there's also issues like uh, um, pumped hard hydro, whether we can get more of that into the system, as well as uh, battery storage. So obviously the just transition will be looking at the coal miners and, looking at, uh, and people that are working at, at Eskom power stations and in certain areas of the country uh, these are major uh, employers. Uh, these are the major employers, in fact, in, in certain parts of Mpumalanga. So to look at ways of uh, cushioning uh, both those communities and those workers, um, and potentially also those workers' children, through different, uh, different approaches. One may be setting aside jobs uh, in uh, renewable stations that come in that area and also maybe setting up some sort of funding or development funding as part of the, um, the renewables bidding process to set aside for, uh, for coal miners' uh, children for education and there'll be issues like reskilling. But I think what's also important is it's not only about coal. Climate change um, is going to affect a lot of industries in South Africa and, s and some are vulnerable to it and if we don't act, um, for instance, uh, the agricultural industry employs a lot of people and uh, you know if climate change uh, bites as it is expected to uh, in that sector there's going to be issues of drought or floods and uh, damage so you need to do um, adaptation there uh, to protect the agricultural jobs and then even an industry like automotive manufacturing in South Africa it's very heavily geared towards uh, the internal combustion engine at the moment. We don't produce any electric vehicles. We don't produce any f hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. Therefore, if there is a decline, as there is expected to be, in the demand for RCE, internal combustion engines, you know, South Africa's automotive manufacturing base is also vulnerable. So it's not only coal mining that have to be considered as part of this just transition framework. It's several industries. And not least uh, those th that are linked to our biodiversity. The, uh, Minister Creasy made it quite clear that almost as many jobs linked to South Africa's wonderful biodiversity and our fauna and flora uh, through tourism and game ranging and people living off uh, 
uh, that, that biodiversity than, than there is actually in mining at the moment. So, you know, it's a, uh, these are all areas that have to be discussed, but obviously those that are most vulnerable are the coal miners and the coal fire power station workers are also very organized in terms of unions. So I think that's going to be a key theme of the just transition debate. The renewables industry is also being fairly proactive in this regard. Yes, there's been a behind the scenes work. Now we know that we've got these renewable energy development zones. They were gazetted back in 2018. And most of these are in wind rich and solar rich uh, areas and also in corridors where they can be connected to the grid. But with this ju just transition discussion, uh, there's been an initiative pr primarily driven out of the solar industry, but more and more inclusive of the wind industry, to look at whether uh, new zones shouldn't be added uh, that are specifically targeting um, areas like co coal areas and coal mining areas where there is terminal decline in those industries or there is the prospect of decline. So. Emalaklerni or, or the old Witbank area is a key target and uh, it has been canvassed with the renewable uh, project developers as whether it would, could be potential uh, for connecting renewable energy to the grid and there seems to be a lot of appetite uh, from, from renewables developers. I think one of the issues there is while the resource, the solar or the wind resource might not be as good in these areas, there's m a really a good embedded grid connecting uh, capacity and uh, as especially as the coal-fired power stations say get decommissioned that can be then used with uh, renewable variable renewable plants backed up by some flexibility so that's that could actually uh, mean that even though you don't get as much pr productivity out of your plants the cost of production might be offset by this uh, grid access then there's the uh, Clarksdorp area in the uh, gold mining uh, region, which uh, is seen as a high potential area as well. And we know as well that a lot of the, the gold miners are looking to do renewable energy anyway inside the fence and better generation of a fairly sizable scale. So this sort of all gels and uh, I think it's, it's a proactive move. It hasn't, these two areas haven't been gazetted as reds yet, but it's very likely that they will be at least that there's, there's something of a vision emerging uh, for how we can ensure that uh, vulnerable communities are captured under this just transition theme and are not left uh, you know, without any cushion. You know, there is this debate whether you need to plan for just transitions. You know, the discussion around, for instance, when uh, the world moved from horse and cart to automobiles or from uh, fixed line telephony to to mobile telephony, there was no such thing as a just transition. So why does energy or electricity need to do it? And I think the real argument here is these are long life assets and we have quite good visibility of what are South Africa's lowest cost solutions. We know they're no longer coal. We know that the Eskom power stations are old and are going to be decommissioned at a steady uh, rate over the next two decades. And therefore we have some time and we have some, that gives us time to plan and it gives us time to plan in a way that's uh, you know, good for society and good for workers. So I think it's, it's, an important, it's an important discussion to have and it looks like finally South Africa is starting to grasp, grasp this nettle. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.